let's make a poached sour salmon soup in this big pot of boiling water that I have already. Um, I have fresh salmon, hot water, and there's some onions already cooking and simmering in it. And then we have some pineapple and tomatoes. And we're gonna add some nor tamarind soup seasoning here. It's really, really easy. So if you guys are just joining, I had to like disconnect that live and do this new one because the connection was really, really poor. How's everyone doing? <laughs> like, hold on. Let me block someone. There's always someone. How do I block? Uh, there it goes. And we're blocked. All right, how's the connection now? Can you guys tell me if the connection's okay? That's awesome? Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, about two weeks ago when I was coming back from Anaheim, uh, my, my mom made this like Vietnamese kan jo. It's like a hot and sour kind of soup. And um, usually the variation is with um, catfish, but she added salmon because I don't really like catfish. I think catfish is a little bit too fatty for me. But the, the Vietnamese dish is usually with catfish. And this soup is very similar to um, Sinagong because we use, we, we use nor tamarind, or we use tamarind, she uses tamarind paste, and I don't have it here, so I'm just using tamarind powder. But this soup is very similar to um, Sinagong, if you ever had it. Ganjua, yes. Anyways, um, so I already have some salt and fish sauce in here, and I added the onions. This is the fish sauce that I use, which is like the three crab brand. You don't need to know how to read it. You just need to know that there's three crabs in front of it and this is the brand that I always use. <laughs> okay, so I added the salt, fish sauce, and onions. And there was like half an onion in there. And this is some pineapple. Oh my gosh. Let me just step away. And this recipe literally is so easy. Um, we're kind of almost like almost done once we put the salmon and stuff in there. Okay, so we have our pineapple in, I'm gonna let that simmer for a minute and I'm gonna add our seasoning packet, which is, if you wanna screenshot this, tamarind mix. And I'm gonna use like maybe half a packet. Uh, there's about five cups, four and a half or five cups of water in here. And the tamarind, tamarind powder is really sour. So just, you know, adjust to your liking never put more put less so put like half the packaging in it and then taste and if it needs more it needs more you know but don't like put it all in and then like regret it later so i'm just gonna put half the seasoning packet in some people like it really really sour you know so where you can find this is everywhere like i've seen it in every market now in the international section and like all the seasoning packets you know where there's the aisle of all the seasonings? Nor is everywhere. It's not just at um, Asian markets anymore. Um, the tamarind paste, though, that's a little bit harder to source because it's like um, from the fruit. It's tamarind, and it comes in like a big block. That's a little bit harder to find unless you do directly go to like the Asian market. But yeah, let's just taste this real quick before we add anything else. I forgot to turn off my notifications. Ooh, that's sour. That's all we need. <laughs> okay, so the pineapple is gonna give this like the soup, it's a little bit of sweetness. You, some people add a little bit of rock sugar. That's up to you. So now I'm gonna add the tomatoes. And um, this pot is so big, it's taking a little bit of time to boil. But the salmon is right here. I'm gonna add the salmon too, and we're just gonna cover the pot. You see how easy that was? <laughs> okay, so I just seasoned the salmon. Love the shirt, thank you. <laughs> it's kind of the wrong shirt to wear while you're cooking live though, because the sleeves are so long. So um, we serve this with, um, with rice. So this is just the salmon I seasoned with just a little bit of pepper. We're just gonna lay it in here like that. And it poaches like this is all gonna be done in like 10 minutes. 
And while we're waiting, we're gonna make some rice. Let me give you a close up shot. Let me give you a close up shot after I put everything in and not get my sleeves wet here. Ta-da! And we're gonna add a little bit more stuff after it's done boiling, but right now we're just gonna cover it with a lid. Like this. Set it and forget it. You guys just remind me to check on it in at about um, five to seven minutes. Just put your timer on because I will probably forget and overcook it. Oh, much better lighting. Much better. All right, let's make our rice while that's cooking. Uh, and before I forget, at the end, we're gonna add just some green onions and cilantro. If you guys are tuning in, don't worry if you missed any of this, we are going to, um, I'm gonna put it on IGTV. Okay, I'm gonna be here. So I have this mini rice cooker. It's perfect for like this, like a family of four because it makes just enough rice for us and a little bit of leftover. I have like two cups of rice in this. I'm gonna wash it in my sink. You guys could just listen. You don't need to watch this rice part, but you always wash your rice until it's the water is kind of clear. So it takes about, I would say two rinsings for it to be less cloudy. So the girls are in school. So they're gonna eat, they're gonna eat the rice when they come back because kids never eat lunch at school, I swear. It's like you pack lunch you pack snacks and like when they come home, the only thing that's eaten is snacks and they always come home hungry. Um, they started like school last week. And what's crazy is now like the public school, lunches are free. And that wasn't the case just like last year. Um, so even though we pack them lunch and then they also have the option if they don't like their lunch to eat this free school lunch, and they still come home hungry because they rather play with their friends than eat lunch. So they'll be home about two hours and they'll have this salmon soup. Okay, so the rice is clear. I'm just gonna add two cups of water in here. So it's equal parts rice, equal parts water. And I'm just gonna eyeball it do the Asian way. <laughs> it's too much water. You guys know the finger test, right? It's like, if it, like, it's like, it has to be equal parts of your finger, so the rice and the water. So this is how my parents taught me to cook rice. You can measure it too, like my husband refuses to do it that way. It's cold water. And that's it. And then we set it. Oh, I need to plug it in. I mean, this recipe was so quick. <laughs> Hold on, we need to plug it in. And I just, it's so, this is like the simplest rice cooker. It's like warm or hot. I got it um, on our anniversary, uh, sorry, wedding present. Like how long have we been married? I got married in 2005. So how long have I been married? 16 years. So this is like a really good old rice cooker and it's lasted a long time. Probably 30 bucks on Amazon if you guys want to try to find it. Um, probably not this version, but there I've seen so many versions of it. You don't add salt in the rice. Oh my gosh, no. Sorry, there's a lot of people who do. But uh, my um, husband added rice, uh, salt in the rice when I was gone in New York this week, and my daughters were so upset. Like it was a travesty because he added salt, and they would they refused to eat it. I know, no, it's maybe it's an Asian thing. Okay, let's go check on our soup. No <laughs> salt, please. Butter. Yes. I've had butter and um, rice before. I have you guys on a tripod. <laughs> so I'm carrying this big tripod. Um, I've been gone for two weeks. I really miss 
I really miss doing our lives because I was in Disney and then I came back and we went to New York. So I really miss like just talking to you guys and doing the lives. And I was really excited to do this one today. I was like, oh, I haven't talked to them like and cooked in a long time. Um, let me open this. Oh, and the tomatoes that we're using. Oh my gosh. These are fresh, fresh tomatoes from uh, my mother-in-law's garden. She just literally just dropped this off like 20 minutes ago. And um, I have like these store-bought tomatoes that are trash. So I'm like, I'm gonna use this. And this is what the tomatoes are in um, the soup. And let me cut one open to show you why these tomatoes are like the best tomatoes in California. Like you, you can't, there's like no replacing these tomatoes. Let me cut one open. Where is it? Where's my knife? And this is what I'm saying is that, um, you know, the tomatoes in, you know, the tomatoes you get in the store, they like, they, they were picked when they weren't even ripe and they ripen like as they're like being transported in these huge trucks. And then they sit in refrigerators for days until they, they go on to, um, out to the grocery store. And it could be like weeks before you actually from picking it to eating it. And it's just, it has like no flavor and it's not sweet at all. So let me cut one open. No, let me cut one without cutting my finger here. Let me get a plate. Let me get a plate, bear with me guys. I haven't done this in a long time. So I'm not used to doing these lives. Let me get a plate. Let show, let's check on this soup though. Oh, that smells so good. It's almost done. <laughs> it's almost done. Okay, let me cut this open and then we're gonna add our um, herbs in there and then we're, we're done with our soup. Let's see if I could do this with my plate. Maybe I don't need the plate. Okay, when you look inside this tomato, tell me, look at that. It's deep, deep red. It's like firm. You know how like usually there's like, it's like a little hollow here with other tomatoes. And it's like just thick and firm and juicy and sweet. Like the sweetest, sweetest um, tomatoes you'll ever eat because they were grown in, in the California sunshine. And to make it sweeter, I don't know who does this. Little salt. This is gonna turn into a mukbang real quick. Um, have you guys tried salt and tomatoes? No. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish that in a little bit. I'm gonna finish this up. I know you guys are waiting for this recipe. You guys DM'd me so much when I shared it on Instagram. Have I what? Have you steamed rice with salted duck egg before? No, but that sounds amazing. Okay. So I have green onions and cilantro. We're gonna open this up again. I wanna show you guys a close up of this. Uh, my mom puts um, a little bit of Thai chili in it, um, but I'm making this for the family and they don't like it too spicy, so. Let's do this without it steaming up. How about that? Okay. Dump that all in there. I love cilantro in, in soup. And like I said, like some the sourness, if it's too much for you, don't put too much. Other than this North seasoning packet, I just put half a bag packet. And um, sometimes we put a little bit of rock sugar, which I, I don't have. So maybe I'll just put a little bit of sugar. So I'm just gonna put like half a tablespoon of sugar just to balance out the, the saltiness of the fish sauce and the sourness. Um, you'll see that in a lot of Asian cooking um, because we have so many like high sodium stuff that we always put a little bit of sugar to balance it out. And that's it. The salmon should be done in another like two minutes. 
or one minute, I think. But let me pick one up just to show you. Hopefully I don't like break it up. And what you get when you poach salmon is that it's like really soft and flaky. And you know, when instead of frying and baking it, it's like super, super tender. And we serve it with just rice and we pour all this um, delicious soup in it, this broth here. And you just pour it into your um, rice and like eat it like in there. It's it's so good. I don't know how to explain it, but um, Vietnamese people call it gan jua. Um, and it's very similar to Filipino synagogue. Ah, let me just close it with this lid. It's very similar to like Filipino synagogue because we use the same kind of ingredients, similar ingredients. I think a lot of difference is just like, um, I haven't made a Filipino version, but I know that they don't put pine pineapple in it. But if you guys are watching, let me know what you guys put in it. Maybe I'll try that next time. Um, but I've made like Filipino synagogue with like the pork ribs and stuff. But yeah, I think we're pretty much done with the soup. I'm just waiting for another two minutes for it to like finish up and then we'll plate it and eat it but while we're waiting. How's everyone? <laughs> I just got back from New York and oh gosh, it was like such a dream. Um, if you guys saw my stories that like my, my manager actually called me like a month ago and she was just like, I want to surprise you. Uh, I'm so proud of you and um, you work too hard and it's okay to take breaks and I'm going to make you take a break. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I'm taking you to, to, to New York. I'm taking you to you know, New York City. Just pick the date. I'm taking you to New York City and I'm going to spoil you, take you to a spa, take you to all these restaurants and just like um, celebrate all your accomplishments and um, we like talked for an hour and I literally like started kind of like tearing up not because like like um, what she was saying or doing it's just that like, I'm just not used to anyone like taking care of me like I'm just used to like being this boss and taking care of my parents my kids my husband like and she said like I know you you wear a lot of hats and you're always responsible for everyone else. Just like, and she's like, for three days, let us be responsible, like for you. And I, I don't know, that was like, so like, I don't know, that's like, it really touched me so much. That's like my manager who makes money off of me working is telling me not to work so much. And she's like, you know, your kids need you, your family needs you, this is a, a, a time, the girls are 12 and that they need their mommy around more. So um, for her to say that, it made me appreciate her even more because um, most managers just want you to work yourself to death just to make them money. And she was more like, concerned about like my well-being. <laughs> so I don't know, I think I picked like the perfect people to be around me. Um, so when we went to New York, we did squeeze in a couple of meetings um, to meet with like, uh, writers and publishers um, for a potential cookbook, which um, I've been bulking at writing a cookbook for so long. Not that I don't want to do one. Hi, Gabby. Uh, not to say that I don't want want it, but um, it's a lot of work, and I I have this imposter syndrome that like maybe no one will buy it, and I'll spend like a year working on it. It's it's all like this. So like to have like my team like set up these meetings and like have this whole itinerary where I'm meeting with writers and all stuff and like and all these publishers are like reaching out wanting to like wanting me to write a book with them. Like now everyone's like fighting to have me like all these publishers are fighting to have like me write a cookbook with them. It's such a such surreal moment because when I went to New York Let me turn this off. When I went to New York I don't know, six, seven years ago, like begging publishers to like publish my book and begging for these meetings and doing it all on my own and no team behind me, making all the wrong decisions and like leaving New York so defeated and so ready to quit and like in tears. Um, and like full circle, I'm in New York. I'm like so like, no, I'm not writing a cookbook. And here's all these people like, like paving the way and like ask, you know, paving the way for me to write one and saying that this is the perfect timing. And 
I don't know. It, it, it was just like a very full circle moment. And I think that's why I was like so emotional when I was in New York because I remember that feeling when I was there years ago and how, um, how everything has changed now because I was so alone like six years or seven years ago doing that to, to now. You know, oh my gosh, let me block someone. There's always, uh, how do I, there it is. Okay, there's always some trolls. There's always trolls here. Okay, let me grab the suit. Let me grab the suit, because it's done. Woo! Oh wait, I'm not gonna ruin my wooden cutting board by putting that there. Yeah, so after all of that and coming back uh, and then having that dinner where my agent, who I've never met in person, came out and my managers came out uh, to take me out to dinner that day. And um, they like at dinner, um, when the dessert came out, you, I don't know if you guys saw the stories, but the waiter came and he put out these um, medals on this plate and then like the um, like Olympic gold, like gold medals. And I, as soon as I saw it, I started crying. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> oh, let me get a bowl for our soup. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I started crying because um, like my man, my team like put all this thought into like making me feel um, special, you know, like, so the medals were uh, 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, like 100,000 and then 1 million on Instagram and 3 million on um, TikTok. And it was just like, oh, we're just so proud of you. And so she was like putting these medals on me and I just was just crying. I was just like, crying the whole time um and they're just like these silly medals but it's just like the thought behind it and what it represented was that I have such a great support system but like and a team that really cares about my achievements and accomplishments that they're willing they're willing to go through all this all this way to make me feel special and important to them and valued so um I don't know. It was just it was just such an amazing feeling to be in New York and experience that. And I know you guys saw in my stories. I actually saved it in my on my highlights and new my New York trip. If you guys want to see me bawling my eyes, eyeballs out. Um. <laughs> okay, the soup is done. I'm gonna do a taste test and hopefully I don't burn my mouth. Look at these fresh tomatoes. Oh my gosh, the rice should be done in about another five minutes, which I don't think we have. So I'm just gonna taste it without, without the rice for now. We'll just do a little bit. So let's move this pot. Let's move, I guess the, who is hot? Who I don't know guys. Let me move this first. Let's not burn myself on live Instagram. You were making this? I'm glad. Who's going to be making it, this? Show me some hearts. If you guys will be making this. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So I just want to show you guys how flaky it is. Oh my gosh. Look how tender. Isn't this like healthy soup, salmon? Um, you can't get this tired of this. And you could make a big batch of it. You know how you like pre-make salmon or chicken? It won't dry up on you because it's in soup and you can eat it for like days. So, oh, I'm not gonna take such a big bite and burn my mouth. But you want a little bit of soup you want a little bit of rice and like maybe some pineapple chunks and some of the herbs. Just like seriously, like 
so comforting. today but I'm actually not a fan of like regular salmon but in soup because it's so tender and flaky it's so good I could eat this like almost every day I swear oh my gosh mm. <laughs> you don't well you could put fresh cilantro oh I could, you could top some more cilantro and lime but it's already sour enough you don't need the lime but if you want it more sour help yourself help yourself but i hope you guys make this recipe because it's literally like so easy to make if you can find the nor packaging which if you go into the international section or like all the aisles where it has it all the packaging you know all the seasonings it should have it there it's nor and you can't find it order on amazon or, I mean, if you want to try finding tamarind paste, which is a little bit harder to source, but this is seriously like the best. Like I could eat this, I don't even need the rice. I don't think I even need the rice if you're doing low carb. I could eat just this, it's so flaky. Let me just show you a big chunk of salmon, like right in the middle. You can see it's like fully cooked, but it's super flaky. The super, look at that. <laughs> Do not make noise with my mouth. I've learned to make noise with my mouth while I'm slurping soup because culturally, culturally, it's a sign of respect and like um, almost like appreciation when you're slurping your soup in Asian culture. So if you don't like slurping sounds, maybe you're on the wrong page because this is a cultural thing. Um, and that's how I eat. And that's how I taught my kids to eat because we eat a lot of noodles and soup. Tamarind paste is easy to find. Try a Middle Eastern market. I don't think we have any here that I know of. Maybe I just never looked. But yeah, if you guys have a Middle Eastern market by you, try it too. So here's another bite with like extra slurping. If um, anyone wants to sign off before I do this extra slurping. Okay. <laughs> my team says they love my clapbacks lately. So I've been doing them a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to take that anymore, guys. It's my page. You guys have something to say? <laughs> Go ahead and say it. You might not like what I say or do afterwards. Okay? Or you'll just be blocked. Did someone just give me money for slurping? Anyways, one more slurp and we'll go. One more slurp and we'll go. What is this? Badges. Oh, thank you for the badges, guys. You don't have to send me money. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I'm gonna put this, wow, my face is all up in your business right now. Um, I'm gonna put this recipe um, up on IGTV, so don't worry if you guys missed anything. You guys ready for another slurp? I hope they're listening. <laughs> I hope whoever said that is listening right now. I'm gonna finish eating this before the girls get home. I think I've been messing with around too much already. And um, I have another video I need to film. I know, I hope you guys got a good laugh out of that one. <laughs> so I'll post this on IGTV and I'll see you guys next week on our next live. All right, bye.